Welcome to Season 8, Episode 19 of the Ubuntu Podcast. It's Tuesday the 14th of July, and we're going to discuss what's been happening in the news and in the community. I'm Mark, and joining me this week are Laura. Hello. Martin. Hiya. And Alan is uh, is off sunning himself somewhere this week, so instead we have Mr. Joe Ressington joining us once again. Hi, Hello. Joe. I was going to say hiya, but uh, I'm afraid I was... <laughs> Oh, you can. <laughs> We've stolen your thunder. I'm terribly <laughs> sorry. Uh, maybe next week. Oh, how are we all doing? Not bad. Good. Excellent. <laughs> the enthusiasm. Yeah. Oh, I could say epic or awesome, but that would, um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. No, but Californian. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Should we work. carry on? Uh, yeah, as Alan <laughs> yes. would say, this is Let's. not working. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> And it's time for some news. So the BBC Microbit computer's final design has finally been revealed. Um, it's a pocket-sized computer that's to be given to about 1 million UK-based children in October, and it features a programmable array of red LED lights. Um, now has two buttons and a built-in motion sensor. And, yeah. No battery. Has any- and no battery. Has anybody seen one of these? Only photographs. Not- yeah. Oh, there They're was very the, small, aren't they? Yeah, the the code bug, which looked a lot like the the original like pictures they published for this. I think um, I've seen some people uh, like reviewing those. But it's mm-hmm. got the same sort of um, LED matrix and um, similar stuff, but it's, it's slightly different. I think. Yeah, it seems to be so, a mixture mm-hmm. of good news and bad news. The good news being that school children are going to have something to hack and get coding on yeah. and also that it's going to be open hardware they're going to release all the specification for it but the potentially yeah. bad news is that the only way to program it is through a website um which is presumably uh. some sort of proprietary software and uh, you can do it on a mobile phone as well and push it push the code to it via bluetooth so it seems like a, a missed opportunity to teach children about software freedom and open source. I think they yeah. won't really be caring about that. It'll just be, let's, you know, they, they don't care how it's working. They just want to make it work. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I do, I do think that it's the, the being able to write the code on the mobile phone and push it via Bluetooth. I think that's actually quite a nice touch considering that it's like such a small portable device being able to just, you know, basically you can carry around your whole development kit in your pocket which is kind of cool but yeah also yeah on uh, microsoft are providing the development tools which again i mean you know yes good on microsoft to be supporting this kind of thing but i can't help but question their motives so <clears throat> does this interface with the raspberry pi um mm-hmm. well it's got some gpi opens i believe so i'm sure you could connect it to a raspberry pi if you wanted an LED matrix on your Raspberry Pi. Mm. So yeah. it doesn't have space for battery. So no. if you are programming it from your mobile phone on the move, how do you ba- how do you power it? Um, apparently, you can you can pa- power it with like uh, AA or AAA batteries. I think. You, oh, just plug it in. I guess they have to. Well, it's got it's got a micro USB uh, mm-hmm. connector, so I guess they're going to have some sort of add on battery pack for it. But originally, it had built into the board space for a button cell battery on the back. But yeah, it doesn't anymore. There was I saw one story say something about they were worried that small children would swallow the batteries. Or oh, something. that was yeah. right. Choking yeah. hazard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, do, so does anyone has anyone read what age children will be receiving these? Um, when it was originally announced, I think they said year seven. So that's eleven. 12. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I can't get excited about children. this, but uh, it sounds like in the future. Alan may be able to wrestle one off his daughter <laughs> <laughs> and actually find out what it's capable of doing. Well, yes, we'll have to see uh, in October, I suppose. Yeah. Well, there yeah. is talk that by the end of the year they will be on general sale as well. So, oh it, yes, it's open, and um, with it yeah. being open hardware as well, presumably anyone could make one. So. Yeah, that was the well, other change I saw mentioned because we were debating whether or not it was open hardware, but this time round that that's been sort of clarified that it is going to be open. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, let's move on to some excellent news then, shall we? 
It, that couldn't have <laughs> happened to a nicer set of people. <laughs> Quite. Hacking team has been hacked and attackers have dumped 400 gigabytes of data. And so a hacking team are a notorious security firm, essentially a firm that... Were there, were there air quotes around that word security? They were very much so, yeah. <laughs> Given that what they do is so, produce malware and sell it to governments at taxpayers' expense to spy on its citizens, um, they're a bit of a shady company, aren't they? They are mm. a shady company. I hadn't come across them before. With shady practices, who have always denied being involved in oppressive regimes and somewhat dubious governments, and oh dear. The delicious yeah, right. irony of them being hacked and having all of their <laughs> records published for everyone to pour over and find out that actually they were up to all the nefarious and nasty things that they had been alleged of doing for uh, for, a, for a quite a while now. I think it's about five years or so since their company changed course and direction and became, uh, frankly, despicable. Yeah, and we're talking about not only um, emails, but source code of the, the malware itself and invoices that prove that they have been dealing with these <laughs> dodgy governments and passwords wow. as well. Uh, the Firefox password somehow got backed up onto a server and it was all stuff like password one, two, three. And just it, this is seriously oh. embarrassing for them, for a company that makes yeah. millions of euros. So, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, any credibility they did have with their um, somewhat iffy clientele is probably being lost. And uh, I wasn't sure, you know, with, was this genuine? You know, could we really read into this that they were such a, a dodgy outfit? But I've since read a report from somebody that used to work for Hacking Team that said, yeah, those are emails that I received five years ago. This is genuine. So I don't think that they've got any... Um, any grounds to state that you know it was bogus um people have sort of confirmed that these are these are genuine samples from from their from their archives wow so anyway from one dodgy organization <laughs> supporting an iffy government to uh the next news item mark uh what are you, are you saying this is in some way related <coughs> uh <laughs> kind of um, instant messaging app or WhatsApp may face a UK ban within weeks, according to certain news outlets. Now, this was from where this this headline actually appeared in the Daily Express, which is, <laughs> shall we say, not the 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 bastion of of truth and quality journalism in the UK. Are you um, are you suggesting they might be a tabloid newspaper? I'm suggesting they might be one of the, the worst kind of you know. <laughs> hand wringing <laughs> table thumping tabloids in the country um however. but 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 however in this case they're actually right on the money um <laughs> prime minister david cameron uh, is pressing ahead with new legislation that plans to stop people from sending any form of encrypted messages uh, and this will of course include a number of popular messaging services including whatsapp imessage snapchat telegram, telegram. Uh, pgp email presumably any communication over https via any websites uh any any other forms of encryption which anybody uses uh well we'll get on to one later but there's obviously disk encryption there's obviously yeah. e-commerce and banking yeah. um some telephone so presumably presumably all of these are going to Most... be ban blanketly banned oh um you know writing letters in code and posting them to each other yeah yeah. So basically yeah. anything, any sort of first world economy is, uh, well, that's it. You've had your time. That was fun. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's going to be interesting to see that the legislation hasn't actually been, um, you know, published yet as to what they're going to be voting on. But it seems that we're going to expect to see something within the next few weeks that, um, that, uh, <laughs> um, that lets us, know what their plans are um and it's going to be interesting to see how far they try and go with this i suspect that what we'll see is some sort of token um oh look we're we're stopping people using encryption or we're going to sneakily try and backdoor some stuff but it's not going to go anywhere near actually stopping people using encryption because you can't so so why mm -hmm. why is the uk government on the verge of uh denying its citizens any right to electronic communication privacy 
Uh, somebody think of the children. <laughs> uh, think of the children, or is it the terrorists this time? Oh, I can't it, it's probably it must be the the damn terrorists. It's the damn terrorists, or the children, or both. I can't remember. Um, so uh, a hypothetical conversation. You're down the pub, and uh, you say to your friends and drinking colleagues, um, "This is really bad, isn't it?" And they all say, "I've got nothing to hide." What's mm-hmm. what's the argument? What, what why have they got something? Uh, to say about this, why should they lobby their MPs? Why should they um, object to this uh, draconian measure? Because it doesn't matter if you've got something to hide, you've got the right to privacy. And at a, on a practical level, everybody has some kind of conversation that they don't want the whole world to see, even if it's just bitching about a colleague one night on, I don't know, Facebook Messenger or something. They, yeah. you know, They wouldn't want that published somewhere, probably. Yeah. So one of the examples I used was um, a Facebook Messenger, people, f- family using Facebook Messenger to exchange uh, photographs of the children in the family, which may have mm. high degrees of flesh tones in them because young children have a habit of taking off all their clothes and running around in the garden butt naked. And, you know, if if all of these messages are now being intercepted and scanned for goodness knows what, think of the children yeah then do your is your account now flagged up because you've got messages pinging backwards and forwards that have a flesh tone percentage percentage that um, makes them look questionable or equally <coughs> if the encryption on those messages has been weakened what's to say it's only the government who are able to listen in quite and even yeah. if it was only the government um i i can't speak for our government but i know that there are um, publications in North America that have proven that um, security service personnel have been less than discreet, uh, giving themselves free access to the data that they have at their fingertips for a jolly good yes. laugh. So, yeah, I think we've all so got it, something yes. to hide it, it, in also, one way or another. But also, if, uh, companies will want it for um, IP and, you know, confidentiality of product Absolutely. releases and things. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, as soon as the government's prepared to pass all of their communications in the clear, then I think we can all, uh, you know, get behind this. <laughs> this is true. Yes. <clears throat> so in conclusion, get angry, write your MP. Yeah, yeah. I, yes. And uh, I th- it's one of these things where I worry that maybe there's not enough people that have got an opinion about this that understand what uh, uh, how this is eroding our civil liberties and that this is just another step down a path and whilst some people may not object to this it might not be the next thing but maybe the next thing and the yes. next thing after that is actually the thing that they start to yeah. to worry about First they but, came for whatsapp and i did nothing yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly there's a slogan there's, i'm sure there's a logo and a banner that could be built around that <laughs> if only there was a free culture and conference in the uk where such a banner could be put up i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i mean this is this is a kind of thing that org or yes. um, yeah. yeah lobby they, about yeah so i mean one one thing would just be to show people like David Cameron and other people what it means to them, because I'm sure they use WhatsApp and that kind of thing. Mm. Well, uh, I, I think that there has been a vote on that Express article and uh, there has been a unanimous outrage. When I last looked, it was uh, n- 90%. <laughs> just like every Express article. Yeah, yeah. but, but un- uncharacteristically, it was 90%. This is absolute lunacy. And yeah. why would we do this? Um, anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> There's a new release of Oracle VirtualBox 5.0, which is soon to be banned in the UK because it now supports encrypted <laughs> disk images, <laughs> which you could use as a means of exchanging messages backwards and forwards. Um, but aside from that little snafu, uh, uh, it looks like quite an interesting release in that uh, it now has uh, para-virtualization support for Windows and Linux guests, which means that... Uh, in uh, addition to using the usual virtualization uh, backends that have been available in VirtualBox, uh, you've now got the option to switch between KVM oh, and Hyper-V. Because um, it was used QMU before, didn't it? Uh, if I mm-hmm. remember that correctly, or was it its own thing? It was its own thing, but it supported the different disk images from a lot of the different ah, uh, right. virtualization platforms. But this is now the actual... Um, ah. well, you so know, you can use it to manage virtual machines on different hypervisors? Yeah, or you can create virtual machines that are um, using the different hypervisors, which is great okay. because my, right. only, my only issue with VirtualBox of late is that it's really quite slow when you compare it to something like KVM. Yeah. And now you, mm. with a simple drop down menu, you can change the, uh, the virtualizer to KVM and nice. it goes lots, lots faster. So yes, it is much faster. You've got a choice of 
hypervisors. And uh, if you uh, use the extension pack, which is not open source, uh, that gives you access to um, USB 3.0. Um, devices which is nice and then uh, disc, discs can now be encrypted which uh, probably makes things a little bit awkward in the UK but you know for those of you that live in the free world uh, rock on <laughs> 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 and Microsoft has become the first 2015 gold contributor to the OpenBSD Foundation oh. and this this is after uh, announcing support for SSH specifically OpenSSH um, which is an open BSD foundation project, I think. That's right. That right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So the the first ever. It says first twenty fifteen, but the first ever gold contributor. Uh, which isn't massive amounts of money, but it's the this the thought that counts in this case. Yeah. Well, it's also the money that counts in terms of keeping it secure. Yeah, because yeah, Theo Durat was in financial difficulty about this time last oh. year and they were really struggling to keep all the different build servers on for OpenBSD. So a number of the larger organizations such as Google and Facebook and now Microsoft are now not paying vast amounts of money in terms of their you know, no. personal worth, but significant amounts of money to actually keep OpenBSD afloat. Uh, and in particular, I mean, who doesn't use OpenSSH? I mean, that is a cornerstone yeah. of, um, you know, network management for uh, the whole um, open source world. And now Microsoft have embraced SSH in uh, PowerShell, or as I've now learned among hipster circles, it's known as Posh. Um, <laughs> that's... Uh, <clears throat> That, that's why Microsoft are now uh, contributing to OpenBSD because they're uh, they're going to be using OpenSSH. Shame that's going to be banned though because that uses encryption. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, fiddle. Oh well. This isn't really workable, is it? Never mind. We've we've still got we've still got <laughs> FTP and Telnet, so oh, all yes. is not lost. <laughs> right, moving on then. Um, we talked about, or you guys talked about, the right to be forgotten, which is an EU directive that means that if you write to google and ask them to remove you from their search results they uh, will sometimes do it at least and <laughs> it turns out that 95 percent of the privacy requests are from citizens out to protect personal and private information not politicians and criminals and public figures like you would expect well so that's actually mm. quite good kind of vindicates yeah. the whole purpose of it really yeah i suppose so yeah well and the and about, I think it's nearly 40% of those are granted and 40% aren't. What happens to the other 20%? <laughs> Pending, I don't know. it says. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, there's like a woman whose name appeared in a prominent news article after her husband died. Yeah. Somebody wanted the removal of her address, which seems fair. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's somebody who contracted HIV a decade ago. So I'm presumably. guessing Google didn't mean to publish this information. No. no, it was accidentally in some source code that has now been removed. But it, okay. that seems a little <laughs> bit fishy to me. Yeah, it's something funny kind of thing to put in source code. Maybe this is the Guardian not using the term source code correctly. Well, no, mm. the, so, the source of a web page it was, I think. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, interesting. But, yeah, cause oh, apparently... did they just comment out <laughs> the search results? <laughs> yeah. Because Google's apparently refused to release this information before. Right. Fair enough. Mm. Um, one final story quickly before we move on to the community news. Valve has contributed a patch to the Linux kernel 2.0. Uh, sorry, 4.2. I'll get there eventually. Wow, which fixes the shit. LEDs on wireless Xbox controllers. And this uh, this code previously existed in SteamOS and they're now porting it to the mainline kernel. If only Tony was so, here to tell us about this exciting <laughs> gaming news. <laughs> but basically, if you have a wireless Xbox controller and a little adapter, the USB adapter to connect it at the moment what happens on an xbox is you turn it on and one of the four leds lights up to show which number controller it is if you connect it to linux all four of the leds flash all the time <laughs> until you turn it off and it's really annoying does so this, this is quite useful that. That. does this sound yes. like something this is a, a a life problem solved for mark <laughs> is, that, oh, yes. is this the, the news you're reporting <laughs> hash Absolutely. first world yeah. problems yeah so right is that the news that's the news okay victoria go Thanks, Victoria. 
So now we've got some community news and events. Um, specifically, on the 5th of December, there's the Cambridge at the Cambridge Computer Laboratory, there's a Pi Wars. Has anybody been to Pi Wars? Sounds messy. <laughs> sounds <laughs> like something I should have been to. Joe, it sounds yeah. like something you should have been to as well. So a Raspberry Pi powered robotics competition. Robots. Oh, I like, think robot, it's like wars. robot wars. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Looks quite cool, actually. September yeah. the 18th. Oh, wife's birthday denied. No, 5th of December. You're reading the wrong one. Oh, am I? Oh, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Okay, 5th of December. <laughs> That's totally <laughs> doable. <of> <laughs> so we'll have a link in the show notes. I think it's piewars.org. Piewars.org. Yep. Excellent. So want to go and, to that. <laughs> <laughs> and today the Ubu contest opens. When you say today, you mean as we publish or as we record? As we publish. Right. So Thursday, hopefully. Yep. But yep. go to the website and you'll be able to see when it does anyway. So that's ubucontest.eu. And what is mm-hmm. it? Um, so it's a contest that's been run by the community to get people to build and publish apps and scopes for the Ubuntu phone using the Ubuntu SDK and Ubuntu plat- platform. Uh-huh. Um, but it also recognises other types of contributions. So it's not just about developing apps. Um, the deadline is, as uh, Martin's already said, <laughs> September 18th. <laughs> Yeah, I can't read. Uh, 2015. Uh, and there are five categories. So there's the best team entry for writing an app, best individual entry for writing an app, um, outstanding technical contribution, which I think is um, a nomination thing, sort of somehow you've contributed to um, Ubuntu phone. Right. Um, outstanding non-technical contribution, which is everything except developing apps, I think. Or so something like doing code. a podcast. Yeah, yeah. What, stand, standing yeah. in what, as a super sub. Standing in. <laughs> <laughs> you mean uh, so, yep. a podcast superhero yeah. standing? Is that that's what you're, the yeah, one. Yeah, on, on, on a podcast that's single-handedly been championing, in, championing the Ubuntu touch platform. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm, mm. Um, and convergence hero, and there wasn't a very clear definition of this, so it may not be that clear to anybody what this is yet. But it sounds cool. Yeah. Um. So the one reason that we may not be eligible is that I'm on the jury. <laughs> oh, um, denied. Sorry. <laughs> so Stitch there's me, <laughs> Carla Seller, Simos Zenny, Telis, and Sujivan. BJ Kumaran. <laughs> I promised I would say his name properly. Um, and Michael Zanetti. Um, and we'll vote on winners in each category. And eventually, the successful winners will be awarded items for a massive pile of prizes, including travel subsidies for the first place winners to the um, UbuCon Germany in Berlin in 2015. Oh, that sounds exciting. Yeah, I'm not sure when that is, but um, yes, that's one of the prizes. Uh, four Ubuntu phones sponsored by BQ and Meizu. Uh, t-shirts bundles of items from the official ubuntu shop great wow go to the website which we'll put in the show notes well cool. I've, I've i've started working on a new app so uh i've got one in mind have you to work out go on go on uh, yeah don't tell me about it <laughs> mine's mine's purely selfish i'm doing jury service at the moment and when i got to the car park i needed to use ringo and there is no ringo oh, yes. app for ubuntu touch so oh. i've started mm. working on a ringo app for ubuntu touch Nice. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's really nice, Laura. You should uh, vote for that one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Totally compromised there. uh, Yeah, really. So anyone wants to do the last one? I'll do the last one then. So finally, in the community news, the uh, Intel Compute Stick, uh, which we've I think we've talked about briefly before, is soon to be available with Ubuntu pre-installed. So the device has a quad-core x86 processor in a chromecast style form factor so it's like an hdmi stick which you shove in the back of a monitor or tv and it's uh most of the ones that are available like this are running arm at the moment but this one is running uh, an x86 one so you an x86 processor so you can run sort of normal uh range of uh, apps and stuff um Unfortunately, the Linux version only has one gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabyte of storage, not two gigabytes of RAM and thirty-two gigabytes of storage like the Windows versions. Oh, but it is mm. cheaper. So, mm. It is cheaper. So the US, there, yeah. There's a few websites that have them listed, but not for sale yet, uh, and they're listing them for about a hundred dollars, which is pretty good, I reckon, for something like this. Amazon have got them on pre-order for about eighty-five, I think. The the Ubuntu yeah. version. So. Um, 
I'm just going to take the uh, opportunity whilst Alan's not here to uh, point out that he and I discussed this a little while ago and I was saying, yeah, it's a shame that the Ubuntu version or the Linux version is gimped because it's got half the RAM and one quarter of the storage. And he was saying, oh, no, no, the news articles I've read recently seem to indicate that it's going to be the same uh, for mm-hmm. both. And unfortunately, yeah, that's not the case. And um, Smugfest. Yeah, it's a shame. And the other thing to be aware of is that I think the Linux version comes pre-installed with Ubuntu 14.04, and for yeah. those of you out there that might want to put another Linux distribution on these, just be... F- Such as. I don't know why anyone would want to do it well, like that. Well, no, but let's suppose you really like Debian. Um, yeah. Just be fair warned that um, the uh, wireless chip in this device isn't supported by the mainline kernel yet. Ah, so unless no, you're prepared... No, device. <laughs> no, so unless you're prepared to build, you know, a kernel with the out-of-tree patches for that device, then... Mm you might want to stick with the Ubuntu version that comes pre-installed for at least a few months until such time that um, the kernel comes out with um, uh, the necessary drivers uh, installed. And presumably this also means that if you wanted to buy the Windows stick and install Ubuntu on it, it would be a bit tricky to achieve that. It's the same issue. So, so, long, yeah. as, so long as you're prepared to build the driver, uh, the, the yeah. kernel with the with the uh, patch drivers, then, then you're fine. Um, right. But yeah. Just just a, a little gotcha that you should be aware of. But all in all, I'm very interested in these devices. I'm thinking of getting one of these. I don't. I haven't bought one yet because I haven't quite decided what it is I'm going to use it for, but I really, really want one. But I haven't quite decided what I really, really want it for yet. You could do a, an Ubuntu Mate respin with the custom kernel. Yeah, see, now you've given me a reason to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> you could even use the Ubuntu oh, Mate fans to buy it. Mm, maybe 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 if there was enough demand for it then uh, i'd do that but uh yeah i don't want to misappropriate funds just for my own personal interests well, let's not right cause then. another snafu uh, yeah let's <laughs> let's let's quickly move on before we get into uh, hot water so victoria's cool. looking looking at her soundboard wondering whether she's supposed to go for two or seven at the moment i think she should go for two <laughs> Right, that's all for episode 19. So thank you for listening. We'll be back next week when we're going to be talking about Google Cardboard and we'll be bringing you some gooey love and uh, we will talk about your feedback. In a nice way. In a nice way. Not behind your back, about your feedback. (laughs) About your feedback. Well, you know, we're not going to be talking directly to you. You know, if, if Samantha was here instead of Victoria, she'd probably be playing some music. By about now, yeah. <laughs> but you know, well, you, if you if you're going to be coping with holiday cover, then I think you, know, you should so all much. cut Victoria some she's, slack. It's the first time she's, she's done doing this. Really well. Okay. <laughs> I think Joe's done quite well as well. Yeah, Thanks for coming yeah, on, Joe. Well, thank Joe. you, Joe. Will you be coming back on next week? Oh yeah, twist my arm. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Bye. Bye. Victoria says it's time to stop.